1590 WAKR. It's time now to go to film school. Let's bring in film study professor Joe Ford Tadano. Joe takes his time to join us each and every Friday on WAKR. I'm Carl Denham. Carl Denham? Denham? Oh, that's the man that captured the monster. He is. Well, Denham, the airplane's got him. That's going back oh, in no. time. It wasn't a the airplane. scene from the original King Kong. And that's where we're going today. Joe, welcome to the show, my friend, and tell us the story on the original King Kong. Well, as Carl Denham said, it wasn't the airplanes, it was beauty that got the beast. <laughs> and we're talking about the, the greatest ape of all time, King Kong. From 1933, celebrating its 90th birthday or its 90th anniversary this month, uh, depending on how you look at it, it premiered in New York in, in uh, March and then went wide nationally in April. So we can just celebrate the whole month. Uh, and it was directed by Marion C. Cooper and Ernest Shodazak. It starred Fay Ray, Robert Armstrong, and Bruce Cabot. And it's uh, a movie that. Uh, uh, you know, we've we've talked on this show before about my you know, Jaws being my favorite movie, and it's the movie that inspired me to go into entertainment. But you know, I really think uh, I, I owe a lot of credit to King Kong for just inspiring me as a kid into my love of movies because I was so taken by the spectacle of it all, and so were audiences in 1933. Uh, it grossed ninety thousand dollars in its opening weekend, which was the biggest opening ever at the time. Uh, it was the third most popular uh, movie in 1933. Of all movies, um, it was uh, <clears throat> it actually saved RKO Studios from bankruptcy. It wasn't nominated for any Academy Awards, surprisingly. Uh, Marion C. Cooper wanted the Special Effects Award to go to Willis O'Brien, who was uh, the, the legendary special effects guy who uh, who did it all. Uh, but the Academy refused. Nonetheless, of course, it's it's gone down in history as one of the great films. Voted 47th greatest film of all time by Entertainment Weekly. Um, the, it, it's interesting, too, because it's an original idea. This came from the mind of Marion C. Cooper, and his first vision for the film was of a giant ape on top of the world's tallest building, which is the Empire State Building at the time. And the Empire State Building was only a few years old at the time, too, so <laughs> relatively new. But he had that vision uh, of the, the ape on top of the <clears throat> tallest building, and he worked backward from that to develop the rest of the story. And it really came from a dream he had about a massive gorilla attacking new york joe when we look at this movie 1933 educate us because in today's world of the newer king kongs you've got the computer generated stuff you've got many more availability for sound effects how did they pull this off in 1933 well it was quite the impressive undertaking and and willis o'brien as i mentioned was the special effects guru who put it all together and um you know he's not a household name but for people in the movie industry, or special, especially uh, people who were into special effects, he's sort of like you know the godfather of it all. Uh, actually, prior to King Kong, he worked for Thomas Edison, so there's his, uh, his street cred. Um, but uh, you know, it was it was so um, they built an 18 inch model of King Kong uh, with a mesh skeleton, a mixture of rubber and foam, muscle structure, and rabbit hair for its fur. Uh, and they built a couple of different models because there were different sizes. Uh, and, and as most people probably know, with stop motion animation, which was what they used, it has to be shot one frame at a time. Uh, minute adjustments between each shot. It took an entire afternoon to get 24 exposures to fill one second because one second is 24 frames a second. Um, so the battle, like, for example, the battle between King Kong and a pterodactyl took seven weeks to film. And, uh, you know, that was really used for, for special effects, you know, up until the digital age in, in the 90s. So uh, it's, a, it's quite the undertaking. Another thing that was uh, new and, and, and sort of original for this was the score done by the legendary Max Steiner, uh, who did uh, Gone with the Wind and Casablanca and a number of other things. This is said to be the first Hollywood film to use a fully symphonic musical score uh, for its narrative. Um, now, films that had music before, but it was just sort of slapped on as background. This was actually written for the screen. Um, there's some shady, you know, not shady, but 
uh, history that says it might not be the first. But regardless, it was seminal. And Max Steiner um, was a visionary, forward-thinking guy. Uh, actually, legend has it that Marion C. Cooper actually, uh, or RKO, wouldn't pay uh, Steiner to record the, the, the score. And Marion Cooper actually paid him from his own pocket, uh, which they then reimbursed him later. But nonetheless, uh, it was the first feature-length original score for a talkie. Uh, it's an original thematic score rather than background music. He had a 46-piece orchestra. Uh, and it's a wonderful, uh, a wonderful little film. I saw, I just saw it a few weeks ago, um, and it's still, you know, it holds up wonderfully. Uh, Joe Fortunato taking us to film school, film study professor, looking at the original King Kong, celebrating its 90th anniversary. Joe, with this movie so near and dear to you in the world of film study, wanted to get your opinion. Years and years later, of course, uh, we would have the the King Kong movie with Jeff Bridges, and then we would have one with Jack Black and such. Did any of those touch you at all, or is it still the 1933 King Kong alone to you? Well, it's interesting. It's a good question, right, because um, the short answer is yes. I loved the the remakes, Um, uh, and I'm an originalist at heart, so, you know, I'm always for the original. Uh, And the special place in my heart (laughs) holds for the original because of what, what it meant to me as a kid, but... You know, the 1976 version was right in my wheelhouse as a kid, too, uh, uh, coming out. So that was a big spectacle. That's not a great film, but I, it's still, you know, I really enjoyed it. I thought the one uh, in the 2000s was a pretty good film. And it was, uh, you know, I think what, what um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I think it's the story that is so wonderful that it just translates to, to remakes. Now, that being said, I encourage everybody to go out and see uh, the original, uh, if you haven't seen it for a while. And, you know, one thing that always is a bugaboo about me is, you know, especially kids. Not, it's not always kids. Sometimes it's adults. Oh, that looks so fake. Oh, that looks so fake. We look. We live in this day and age where, you know, people are so used to, <clears throat> you know, incredible avatar-like digital effects. Um, but the story is so wonderful. I, I defy you to watch the 1933 King Kong and not be moved by Kong himself and, 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 uh, in fact, um, you know, Marion C. Cooper said, look, if I have him for that long, uh, I'm going to have him at the end. They're going to cry, you know, when Kong dies, you know, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and, and, you know, similarly, that's kind of what, said, what was said by Steven Spielberg in Jaws uh, about the, the they said, oh, this is the stupid ending. And he goes, hey, if I've had him for two hours, I'm going to have him at the end. And, um, you know, just to, again, to sort of show the, uh, <clears throat> the reverence that this film has in our culture, in 2004, uh, after actress Faye Ray died, the Empire State Building darkened its lights in her memory. So mm. uh, it's 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 with us. And in fact, uh, um, another just sort of funny little legend is that when Marion Cooper was was approaching Faye Ray uh, to do the movie, he said, "You'll have the tallest, darkest leading man in Hollywood." She thought it was Clark Gable. <laughs> there you go, film school. Film study professor Joe Fortunato joins us Fridays on the Ray Horner Morning Show. Check out of his work. We post it over at WAKR.net as well. Joe, as always, my friend, thanks for time. We'll reconnect on the show next week.